What's going on, everybody? It is January 11th, Thursday. We've got a garbage slate of three games. Uh, there's obviously the fourth game uh, late afternoon in London, I believe. I don't know. Definitely not in America. <laughs> and definitely not getting played in fantasy. But anyway, uh, all three games don't have a line to start. So all of those are made up. <laughs> and... You know, the Raptors are going to be missing, likely, Kyle Lowry and, most assuredly, Serge Ibaka. Uh, Kings rotation, a little bit up in the air. Clippers, we don't know anything about Blake. We don't know Taya Dosic. CJ Williams uh, rolled his ankle. He is out, so their rotation is in disarray. Um... Lakers are fine, and then the Spurs, you know, no Kawhi, no Tony Parker, but, you know, we don't necessarily know about Danny Green, and those minutes are also kind of a shot in the dark. So real good analysis coming up for you in the next half hour. Um, we're going to take a shot at it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be active through the day for any updates as soon as news comes out, but I'm flying blind this morning. Uh, so let's see where that shakes out. First up is the Raptors. They're hosting the Cavs. Uh, based on my gorilla math, I was I have the Raptors favored by four. That's probably too high. And just while I'm here, I'm going to dump that down. I didn't really think about the fact that uh, both Lowry and Ibaka were out. Let's call it a pick since it's in Toronto. It doesn't matter. Um, it's very marginal changes, but... I like to try. Um, so this is uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's just a really weird one, guys. Uh, obviously, Demar is going to be uh, very interesting. It's not like Cleveland has anybody to guard him, um, but he's also pretty expensive. So Fanduel ninety six hundred, DK eighty eight hundred. He's honestly probably closer to a full fade than anything else. Um, the only issue is that he's just going to shoot and shoot and shoot and probably even decide to shoot. Um, but I don't, I don't want a bunch of him. There, I think there are going to be better options at guard out there. So, I mean, he's he's expensive on Fanduel. Uh, he's probably just a straight three for me. That could change with any additional news, but there are pieces of the Raptors that I'd rather have, like DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright is 5,700 on FanDuel. He's 5,100 on DK. Um, both, you know, really solid prices. Uh, obviously, a little bit better on DK, but he's a... He's probably a 1 for me on DK and a 2 for me on FanDuel. I don't know if anybody saw it last night, but I've got the tier rankings onto the website, so they'll all show up with the projections from now on. Um, I know people were asking, like, what do the tiers mean? They don't really mean all that much. And I know that sounds kind of ridiculous. It's just a way for me to go through this process and rank guys in buckets so that when I come back and look at it later on in the day, I sort of have a, a an anchoring point to, you know, what I thought when I went through this. Because what I say in this video and in the morning, um, you know, obviously I believe it and it's, it's my opinion, but it's really hard to, like, remember what I'm talking about after all of this talk and, like, making sure that I'm articulating it to you guys. Um, so those tiers help me keep everybody anchored. And they're usually pretty big. There's big amounts of guys in each bucket, so things can be moved around. Ananobi should probably get more minutes, but he's an offensive uh, nothing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Jonas looks all right on DK. Yes, I get it. Nope, I didn't get it. <laughs> Uh, but 6,200 on FanDuel is probably a little bit higher than I would like. Um, but I'm 
I'm perfectly happy with having some Jonas. But he's probably a three for me. Uh, one guy that I would be interested in having a lot of, Pascal Siakam. Uh, he's minimum salary on FanDuel. I want to know more about expected rotations and luckily we should know Toronto's lineup before the game starts but I would expect Siakam to get you know a decent amount of run I've got him in right now for 24 minutes and I think that that's probably that could probably be low and if that's the case I mean you absolutely 100% have to have him on FanDuel he really is a one for me if we assume that he gets 24 minutes. I don't have any reason to think that he wouldn't get that time, but just in case, um, keep an eye on it. And on DK, uh, he's a two for me. He's 4,100, um, just kind of how it is. CJ Miles, um, I don't mind having him. My expectation is that this Raptors-Cavs game is by far the paciest, highest scoring game of the of the three but we'll see how that shakes out that could the that could change my opinion a little bit here but i think cj's in line for a big game as the Cavs don't really stop people from shooting threes and cj miles pretty much only shoots threes um so while i don't necessarily love the price uh the minutes are there and i'd like to have him in a lineup or two same sort of situation for fred van vliet um you know, I'd be okay with having a little bit of him. To the Cavs now. And this should be an interesting game. LeBron is 11-5 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. But no Lowry and no... And no uh, Serge Ibaka means... I feel like LeBron is just going to love this game. I, I, I like LeBron a lot. I think that I'll have a lot of him. Um, I think he's primed for a big game. After that, on the Cavs, there's not a lot to like. I think Kevin Love on FanDuel is probably the only other thing that I would seek out right out of the gate. 6,700 on FanDuel. You'll, so you'll need Love to get to... Like 33 to hit value, to hit 5x. Thirty, 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 thirty. I mean, that's a no-brainer to me. Not to mention, you know, it won't be Serge Ibaka guarding him. So that's always helpful. But I really don't see a lot otherwise for Cleveland right now. We'll go to Sacramento. Kings hosting the Clippers. Um, I think all of these games are going to have relatively close totals, so from a blowout perspective, I don't think that's going to be a worry. Um, so the totals aren't going to matter all that much. I'm assuming George Hill is back. Um, the assumption also is that Frank Mason's going to play. But again, the, it's... We just don't have enough information, but I'm just driving out the video <laughs> one way or the other. I don't want to get yelled at by people. So I do still like Bogdan. He's 5,500 on FanDuel, which is kind of prohibitive, but he's 5,000 on DK. And that works for me. I'd say he's a 3 on DK, and I probably wouldn't touch him on FanDuel. Um... I don't have a ton of interest in really anybody else in this game. Um, Zebo on FanDuel, I guess. But other than that, I mean, everybody's... They're just sharing so many minutes that it's hard to see where the value truly comes from. You have, if you're going to be using the Kings, you need to put together like a game scenario in your head of who could get additional minutes. Because that's, that's, the, that's the trump card in all of this, is, is minutes. If you get someone right that plays, you know, like I've got 
Garrett Temple at 24 minutes. If you guess, if you, if you put that game together and you can land on Garrett Temple and see like, oh, I, I, here's a path for him to get 30 minutes, then that's how you end up on Garrett Temple. But on the surface, everybody looks like garbage. Now to the Clippers. I, I mean, like this is, I'm just, I'm flying blind. So the assumption is that Blake can play as of right now. Um, I might have to do like a, a pre-lock video. I'm not going live tonight for these three games. I don't see the need. But I might do like a a refresher video if it comes out that all of the news that I have from earlier or from this video doesn't exist. That'll be something to entertain. So right now, I think Blake plays, and I like Blake. Um, who knows? Uh, on FanDuel, he's a three for me, but on a on uh, DK, I'd actually like a decent chunk of him. I'd, I'm willing to take that risk. Coming back from the concussion, so my assumption is that, like, if he's going to play, he feels okay. I, it's not like a minutes thing or, like, a, he's, he's not working back from, a, like, a sprained knee or anything. Lou Williams, 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. What did he finish with last night? I know he had 50 points. I just typed blue. Might as well. 58.9. That's really... For scoring 50 points, that's kind of shitty. <laughs> but great, like, awesome game from Lou Williams, regardless. Uh, not really a great scenario if... Uh, Taya Dosich and Blake both come back. But... He's also Lou Williams, and... He's going to shoot the ball. So I'm willing to take a little bit of a chance on that, even though I don't like the price whatsoever. Uh, Taya Dosich is the only other guy that I would be interested in here for right now. This is another team that's going to be really essential with getting um, news. And since they played last night, they probably won't have a shoot-around today, which means we... Uh, News is going to be very hard to come by for the Clippers. Unless it comes out early, the guys are just out. But any sort of uh, up-in-the-air news, we might not know that by 8 o'clock. Um, so if Tato Sitch plays, I like it. That's it's basically all there is. I'm okay with not having DeAndre. I don't think it's a really good game for him. And then, you know... Obviously, Jawan Evans opens up if Taya Dosich doesn't play. I think Tyrone Wallace opens up if Taya Dosich doesn't play. Harrell opens up if everybody doesn't play. <laughs> but the Clippers are a tough one right now. Final game, Lakers and Spurs. At least the Lakers we can actually talk about in that... Uh, none of them look interesting on DraftKings, and everybody looks kind of the same on FanDuel. So, the Lakers don't really get to the line, and the Spurs keep people off of the line. That's really the only thing that I'm interested in, is as using like as a differentiator for these guys. So, I don't like Brandon Ingram all that much. I'd be much more likely to go with Lonzo. And that's kind of a down-the-ballot type dude. Just fill him in. Um, I don't really see any interest in KCP. I'm still willing to roster Kuzma, particularly at FanDuel, where he is 5,100 compared to 5,600 on DK. Has he been... What did he do in the last one? Okay, so 28.5. That's fine. Um, yeah, he, he's probably a 3 for me here and a 4 for me on DraftKings. Randall, price is finally climbing. He's 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. He's probably just a four for me on FanDuel. Man, this sucks. This is one of the terrible slate. And then I think Brooke Lopez is worth 
a peak. He's hyper efficient in the 20 minutes or so that he plays. Um, but again, he's a FanDuel 4 for me, sort of like Randall. And then finally, we've got the Spurs. Nah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no Kawhi, no Tony Parker. I'm assuming Danny Green plays. But this is sort of where we end up. Uh, I don't want LaMarcus Aldridge on FanDuel at all at 9,900. That is insane. But I will take a decent look at him on DraftKings. I actually like him a lot on DK. Well, not a lot, but enough. It's actually, uh, yeah, he's just, if he were like 8,100, I think that it would cross the threshold to tier 2. Kyle Anderson is 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Probably a three. Patty Mills has been getting a lot of run lately. 27 minutes, 28 minutes in his last two. Uh, 28 minutes and eight fantasy points. It's hard to get too crazy over Patty Mills. You know, I think some interesting, like, Spurs stacks will be fine tonight. Uh, Bertans, if you expect him to continue to get time, is is definitely worth a play. Forty five hundred on both sites. Yeah, he's a three again for me. Like nothing's just jumping out. Um, I've got Murray at twenty one minutes, which at thirty eight hundred on Fanduel ends up being a decent play. But uh, you gotta assume that he gets those minutes too. He can be a fan duel too if you're if you are confident in the same minutes projection as I am. Other than that, like that's it for me. It's it's a garbage slate, and with. One 8 o'clock game and then the other two games at 10 or after that, we might not get news, which is terrifying. Let's run this in the optimizer and see what spits out because I honestly don't have a clue. I've never been more confused by, by a slate in my life. It's just so much like injury worry and you know, crappy teams like the Kings and the Clippers are garbage when people are out. Oh, I just wish that Philly-Boston game was a main slate game. It'd be nice to watch, but whatever. All right. Projections are in. What are we going to get? It's, this, this could be anything. Okay, that's what I sort of expected. A ton of Raptors. DeLon Wright a ton, Blake, a ton, Ald really, Aldridge. Wow, that I didn't expect. Okay, a lot of DeRozan, no LeBron, no LeBron. So it's just a healthy diet of Raptors and... You know, a sprinkling of Clippers, Kings, Spurs, and Lakers. And basically no representation. Literally no representation from the Cavs. Well, at least I was right saying that the team looked like it sucked. I would like to have, let's say, 30% LeBron. Because I think that it's a great matchup for him. So let's see what happens when I lock that in how the lineups get built. So you end up with a lot of, well, DeLon Wright, obviously, and then a split of Jonas, Blake, Bogdan. I don't... All right, off the jump, we're stacking Raptors tonight. <laughs> Let's see what the FanDuel looks like. Everything that I'm doing right now is just a fool's errand. It's all going to change. 
This will go down in history as the worst video I've done. That's pretty hard. <laughs> no. I really wish they would default to the main slate, but whatever. All right, FanDuel, what do you got for me here? Ten lineups. Cross the board, LeBron. Good to know. Not that that surprises me. The The firmness of position makes LeBron so much more interesting of a play. It's basically like, okay, you can either take LeBron or you need to hope that Kyle Anderson and CJ Miles play well. So It's hard to fade LeBron. Most of you... Uh, LeBron, Blake, Love, DeRozan... Well, I'll say DeLon right too, but the first four in either nine, all nine or nine, or in LeBron's case, ten lineups. That's insane. Like, I really, man, I, I might play on FanDuel tonight. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Screw it. We're playing on FanDuel tonight, everybody. So if you got to the end of this video, no DK tonight. We're going back to the roots. It's FanDuel for life. What? But, yeah. Right? Murray, well, who can we do? What if I don't want Murray? Who's the other? Oh, it's Mills. Okay. DeLon Wright, Patty Mills, DeMar, Buddy Heald, or insert King here. LBJ, Anderson, Blake, Siakam, Love. I'm, in, I'm excited now. Going back to the roots. FanDuel. That's all I got for you guys. It's... There's a decent chance. Uh, let me know in the comments if I should go live tonight. Three games. It's maybe just like an abbreviated 45-minute session or something. We'll see where the news comes in. Um, that's going to be the key to it all. We need a lot of info on the Raptors and their potential rotations. Um... They should have a shoot around, so we should know a little bit more. And then cross your fingers that we get info on the Clippers. Because um, that'll really sort of, I don't want to say open things up, but it'll bring people in that aren't on the table right now. But stacking Raptors tonight, guys. Uh, thanks for bearing with me through this three game slog. Uh, if you liked this video please feel free to like it and if you didn't like this video it would be really cool if you liked it anyway <laughs> uh check me out on reddit um check my twitter patreon paypal venmo friendster whatever just come find me good luck tonight <laughs>